him there in the red shirt. Uh, Dan Orlovsky, Jalen Hurts, rise or fall in year two? I'm going to say rise. Uh, I think this offensive line is going to be a lot better than people are giving it credit for. Devontae Smith's got to step up and be a number one. But Jalen Hurts, all we've seen him do since he came on the scene in Alabama is get better and get better and get better. And I believe in his work ethic. I don't know what the public expectation of his performance is going to be, but I think he's going to rise. Well, let's talk about your expectation of his performance. And in particular, I know you have some tape about the one thing you need to see him get right. Ball placement against man coverage. Greeny, the most important thing for a quarterback when playing against man coverage is your ball placement. Well, why? Because the trailing defender to the receiver you're throwing to is going to be closer. You can't be accurate. You got to have elite ball placement. Two examples here. Now, I want everyone to focus on the slot, okay? This is going to be the tight end, Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard is going to push up. The ball getting snapped at about the 42-yard line. He's going to push up and get to about eight yards and snap off, okay? Right around like the 34-yard line, this is going to be one-on-one man coverage. Now, we're going to lose him a little bit at the bottom of the screen, but this is the big point, okay? So, Jalen is getting the ball out of his hands right now. He's already made his decision. It's man coverage. I picked Dallas Goddard against the linebacker. Now, i got to have great ball placement of exactly where I'm going to throw this football. Now, the ball's out of his hands. Now, I want everyone to pay attention. Bottom of the screen, really focus in here of Dallas Goddard. I told you, eight yards and come up. Now, when you're a quarterback, let's say Jalen is throwing the ball from his from, from the right, and I'm throwing this as a quarterback. When I see this guy put his foot in the ground, I'm thinking throw this ball on his left shoulder. That's where I want to place it. So when he turns around, it's going to end up being on his right shoulder. Throw it to his left, so when he turns around and comes back, it's on his right shoulder. Now, where's Dallas Goddard? He's right around the 34-yard line, okay? His shoulder should be catching that ball. That right shoulder should be catching that ball with placement. Again, he's on the 34-yard line. Now, as he reaches back, look, that ball's thrown to about the 36-yard line. He came up, put his foot in the ground, he's turning around, back where he came from, have it here, not here. That's poor ball placement versus man coverage. The next thing that stood out was when Jalen throws go balls versus man coverage. I always say this, when you're throwing a deep shot against man, trajectory, put air on the ball. Now watch this, two things. I would say this to Jalen Hurts. First of all, just because you're playing man defense doesn't mean you stare exactly where you're gonna throw. Jalen's looking there right now. I'm throwing to that guy. Well, this safety's going, all right, I'm reading your eyes. I'm reading your eyes and I'm gonna go that way. And what you're going to see is a really flat football. I would want this ball to look like the arch in St. Louis, okay? You've got to have a ton of very flat. What happens is when you stare there right now, that's how you get number one and number two defenders. He's trying to make a perfect throw, but this is a better angle from the back. Again, Jalen just caught the snap. Jalen hurts. Jalen Rager's not even off the line of scrimmage. When you look right away versus man coverage, that safety's going to come. Hold your eyes still for one second. Hold your eyes down the middle of the field for one second. That leaves more room. When you have more room, you can put more air. This should be two kinds of throws. I always say this to people. Don't tell me you can make all the throws. Make the right throw at the right moment. This should be a throw with a ton of air, but only if you hold the free safety. Or this should be a throw that is a little firm, but back shoulder. If you want to take a little bit off, it should be a back shoulder throw. But look at the ball placement. I mean, he's trying to make a perfect throw. How many quarterbacks do we know can make that throw? I mean, that's trying to be perfect ball placement, but it's too flat. I had Hembo look it up. Jalen Hurts last year on throws 20 yards or more down the field, the air time, how much time the ball is actually in the air is less than two seconds. That is well below the league average. So ball placement specifically on the intermediate game has got to get way better. And then the deep ball, hold your eyes for a second and put some air under it to allow those receivers to adjust. That's outstanding. I could be, we do two hours of that as far as I'm concerned every day, and I'd be just fine. So, so Lewis, let me come to you as we watch that. He's a fascinating player to me, Jalen Hurts, in that I didn't think that they drafted him to replace Carson Wentz, but that's exactly what's happened in one year. And now we all know they have all this draft capital going into next year. So do you view this, Lewis, mm-hmm. as a one-year audition for Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia? Yeah, I, I do, simply because, number one, I know the history of this football team as far as 
how they look at quarterbacks, and that, and that being that they are always looking to kind of re replenish that position and always have an eye towards the future of that position. Number two, all the draft capital that you just referenced, it's not that they acquired this for, you know, for just to have it and have people go, hey, look at all the draft capital we have. They're looking at future acquisitions down the road, and they always want to be flexible. And number three, there's still that quarterback hanging out there right now who we don't really know what his future is going to look mm -hmm. like that they have been attached to, and that being Deshaun Watson. And look, I think for Jalen Hurts, he needs to right now go ahead and impress this new coaching staff to the degree at which they will then go into the front office and say, hey, look, we feel as though when you drafted him in the second round that he, you have hit on him and he is someone who we can ride with in the future. Because if he doesn't, if he doesn't impress them and he doesn't blow them out of the water, remember, they didn't draft him, this, this current coaching regime. They do, mm -hmm. have, do not have any ties to him. They are not going to advocate for him and sponsor him. They will be looking for the next quarterback along with Howie Roseman and along with Jeffrey Lurie. So without a doubt, this is a very important football, a rather very important football season for Jalen Hurts with this new staff and with these new weapons that they got for him. And so Graziano, let's get more deeply into that for people who don't know all the draft capital they have and what the expectation is they could do with it. They have two first round picks and if Carson Wentz plays at least 75% of the Colts offensive snaps, they will have three first round picks. So if they want to trade for Deshaun Watson, mm -hmm. Russell Wills, whoever might be available next offseason or even this season, uh, they can. They have more capital to do it than anybody else. And you said, Greeny, you didn't, you didn't think that they drafted him to replace Carson Wentz. Neither did they. <laughs> to Lewis's point, they are always covering themselves as best they can at the quarterback position. So even if they like Jalen Hurts, they're not going to put all of their eggs in the Jalen Hurts is going to be great basket. All right. And hold that thought, Dan, because I want to get to one other thing. We will come back to it. But I want everyone to see this throw and tell me who it makes you think of. This is eye candy from the Chicago Bears training camp and just watch Justin Fields. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh boy. Okay. We got a little sidearm mm. running left, throwing left. Dan Orlovsky. I, I can't be the only one. Who does that look like? Yeah, he wears 15 and he lives in Kansas City. If mm -hmm. there was ever an illustration that was needed to point to people in Chicago of why Justin Fields or Andy Dalton, just play this on loop as you enter your building. I mean, hey, can the quarterback that we drafted make up for our bad, which is our poor offensive line? Yes, he can because his his athleticism. And can his talent make our good gooder? I don't know if that's a word, but can he it's make the good gooder? Mm -hmm. And this is it. Like, okay, great. You broke the pocket. That's good. Now make it gooder by this little underarm sidearm throw for a touchdown. I think this plays the perfect example of why Justin Fields over Andy Dalton. No good is not a word, Graziano. I can what? see you looking at me. You went to you Georgetown. There, you I play football. Better okay? is the word. There no, is a word. Fair enough. The word it's is fair better. Enough. It's good. Go it's it. gooder. It's good. They have three quarterbacks, and right now he's probably the goodest. So the goodest. let me then come to Lewis Riddick on that because <laughs> it was your tweet that sort of got a lot of people's attention to how impressed everyone in Chicago is with him so far. But you also know that staff. They feel they are obsessed with the Mahomes model, which which means not going to the rookie immediately. So what is your sense of what they're going to do? Look, I still, you know, I, I don't know if they're obsessed with the Mahomes, with the Mahomes model, I, although I know that they like it a lot. And, and you're right, Greeny, so I'm not trying to sit here and downplay what you just said. But I think my, my sense is this. Because of how poor this offensive line potentially is going to be, look, Tevin Jenkins right now mm -hmm. needs to get on the football field. Their, their rookie uh, second-round draft pick out of Oklahoma State, he needs to get on the field. He needs to get on the field in a hurry because they're worse at offensive tackle this year than they were last year. And if you watch them last year, they were terrible at offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. Matt wants to make sure that Justin Fields is not able to, is not put in harm's way, meaning this, that they're, that they're so bad at the offensive line position and he's not advanced enough as far as being able to protect himself that it winds up hurting his development because he winds up taking, you know, a significant number of hits. He wants to make sure that that's not the case. Now, if he feels comfortable with that, he'll put him out there because he's not blind. Matt's not stupid. He understands. Justin can do things that Andy Dalton can not only dream of doing. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why he was the one who was advocating for drafting this guy. He wanted this guy. And remember this, he also was the guy who played a large role, a large part in the evaluation of Patrick Mahomes down in Kansas City. Mm. He knows what he's looking for, a quarterback. He knows what he's got in this guy.